Hey guys, welcome back. Now that you have learned that roasting coffee at home is good for you, good for the farmers and good for the environment, let me explain to you what the coffee roasting process is, the basic tools you need, and how to roast coffee at home in this video. All right, what is coffee roasting process? Coffee roasting is basically application of feed to the green coffee beans while the beans are moving. The movement is key. If there's no movement, the coffee can get burned and the technical term is called scorching. If you burn the beans, it won't taste good. Think of it as, as roasting peanuts on the pan, they get scorched. So during the roasting process, the green coffee beans go through three different phases. Phase one is called drying phase. That's when the beans turn from green color to the yellow color. The second phase of the process is called milliard phase. That's when the green beans turn from yellow to light brown. And the phase three is called caramelization process. That's when the beans turn from light brown to dark brown. At the very beginning of caramelization process, there is a cracking sound. That happens when the beans are exerting the heat energy that they have built inside them. The sound is similar to like popcorn popping. So when there is that sound, that's called first crack. And coffee is considered roasted when there is uh, this first crack sound. If you are one who likes all the origin flavors like the fruity notes that you hear in the coffee shops and everywhere, the blackberry, the blueberry, the floral notes, you want to roast it to the light roast level. If you are one who likes more body and likes to drink coffee with the milk, then I recommend roasting it to medium, medium dark, dark and French roast. The time it takes to go from light roast to medium or dark and French depends on the type of the machine that you're using. But for the popper that we will use, it takes 20 seconds after first crack is medium, plus 40 seconds is medium dark, plus 60 is dark, and plus 90 seconds is French roast. Ultimately, use your eyes to gauge, uh, but those are the ballpark numbers. Ultimately, it depends on what you like. So we recommend you try to roast at different roast levels and see what you like and go for it. So in the next part of the video, we will show you how to roast coffee on this popper. Okay, so what do you need to roast coffee at home? Number one, you need a high quality green coffee beans. Number two, you need a popcorn popper or any other roasting device. We recommend popper is the best way to start roasting coffee. Number three, you need some sort of measuring cup. Uh, like if you're roasting using any other cup, just use half a cup of it. Or you can also use something that comes with the popper. Um, you also need a cloth to capture the coffee shaft, which is the skin of the coffee uh, during the roasting process that comes out. So the cloth helps easily capture it and dispose it off. And then you need uh, some sort of cooling uh, tray or colander or flour sifter so that you can easily cool the beans. Uh, as soon as the roasting is complete, it's important to cool the beans right away, otherwise there is over roasting of the beans. And then you need uh, a single wall roasted coffee bag to store coffee freshly without getting oxidation. Single wall is important because there's a lot of gas in the roasted coffee beans after roasting and the gas, the CO2 gas is emitted for the next 24 to 48 hours. If you use a single wall container, make sure you dedicate that container just for the coffee beans because coffee can attract residual smell. And finally, if you're a nerd, uh, use a scale to measure exactly 75 grams to be roasted in this popper. But any other measuring cup, half of a half cup of it will work or uh, just a cup from this popper will also work as well. Alright, let's get started with the roasting. One note, if you're roasting coffee at home indoors, make sure you crack open the door or window or do it underneath the wet and turn on the wet. Because sometimes these poppers can emit a lot of fumes which can trigger the smoke alarm which is not fun.
Okay, let's take one cup of green coffee beans uh, using the cup that comes with the popper or you can use the standard uh, kitchen cup but use half a cup of that. Make sure it's flat, not over. Make sure it's flat and then Alright, also during the roasting this might get hot so if you have a mitten use the mitten to lift it up to, at the end of the roasting. Alright, let's turn on, make sure this is placed right in front of the spout and let's turn it on. Now you can see the beans are moving, the beans need to move. If the beans are not moving then you have poured too many beans. Um, Approximately, this popper can do 75 to 80 grams, uh, and most of the time, this this cup is good enough to measure that. So the beans need to move. So okay, now you see the beans are changing from green to light, it's very lightish yellow. Okay, so there you go. Now they are turning into a little bit of light brown. This is this is where you should smell something like bread. Looks like we're now getting into a caramelization phase, which is going from light brown to the dark brown. And at the very beginning, you're gonna hear the cracking sound. So we are almost at the three minutes since the beginning of roast. Okay, there you go. Now you hear there's a first crack sound. All right, now if you want light roast, go for 10 more seconds. You should have at least five to 10 seconds of cracking sound. If you want medium, go 20 to 30 seconds. Depends on the beans and the temperature of the environment where you're roasting. If you want medium dark, go for 30 to 40 seconds. If you want dark, go for 60. And if you want French, go for 90 seconds. And all right, let's top it. Make sure you pour the beans right after you turn off the popper, otherwise there is some sort of post roasting that the beans can get over roasted in this popper. So that's why it's very important to put it in the colander where you can cool it down and place the bowl if you want. So what this is doing is essentially cooling the beans very quickly. And then you can place it on top of the bowl so that this enough air circulation and the, the beans get cold. Once they reach the room temperature, you can pour them into a single bowl pan. All right, now that your roasted coffee beans are at room temperature, which you can measure by uh, touching them, let's go ahead and pour them into the single wall bag. We talked about the importance of single wall bag. Try this coffee 24 hours after roasting and taste the different notes of flavors in it and what do you like about it, what do you want to improve and change something different. Experiment and eventually you'll find coffee that you will love from a particular origin and also a coffee of a certain roast profile. Alright, so that's home coffee roasting guys. It's not complicated. It's as easy as you want it to be. The purpose of this video is to show the basic tools you need to roast coffee at home so that everyone can roast coffee at home and drink the highest quality coffee at the lowest cost as possible. And while doing that, benefit the farmers and the environment. Can't get any more easier, any more tastier, and any more cheaper. So please roast coffee at home.